Okay guys, what is up? It is What's It's 95 here and I'm back again today with another video and today as you can see on the screen, as you could tell by reading the title of the video, I'm talking about Borderlands, the pre-sequel, the new game, well newish game that has been released by um, 2K Australia and Gearbox um, and there's been a lot of um, controversy about this game, not in terms of um, the reviews or or anything that the critic is saying, I'm talking about the actual people playing the game right now. Um, they're not, and me included, we're not very happy about what is being changed in the game, what is in the game, what isn't in the game. It seems, uh, and it seems that these issues aren't being addressed. So, basically, I'm, I'm on the Borderlands forums right now, and I'm going to read you this uh, little expert it's uh, basically the latest hotfix. If you if you um, are a Borderlands fan, then you've probably heard about this. But this is just going to be me um, reading out what the hotfix is um, and why it's a problem, and just my personal opinion, obviously. So a hotfix obviously only applies when you're connected to the internet. So I'm guessing a lot of people are going to be playing this game offline now. But here, the latest hotfix. December the 2nd, so number one, addressed an issue where some types of ice damage were being incorrectly resisted. Number two, cragging kills will now contribute the correct amount towards the big game hunt challenge. Number three, Iwajira, Iwajira, <laughs> not sure how I'm supposed to say that, is now less likely to drop legendary loot. Did you see that? Number four, um, limited the number of critical hit dialogue callouts number five the roses continuous bonus damage uh, continuous damage bonus has been reduced and number six miss moxie's probe life steal bonus and critical modifiers have been reduced so six updates that were released into the game and no one is happy about them. Basically, we uh, no one cares about the Kragans or the ice damage. You know, that stuff should already be fixed. Uh, no one cares about the critical hit dialogue callouts. Um, although, apparently, with Athena, it gets really annoying. <laughs> the three main things that everyone are fucking going mental over because they just don't make sense. Irajira's drop rate for legendaries has been decreased. The Rosie, um, the Rosie's damage has been re reduced, and the probe have also has also had its um, life steal bonus and critical hit modifiers reduced. Now, I don't know if you guys know if you if you are playing the game and you're level 50, then you'll know this. But if not, then you probably don't know that it's really hard to get legendaries in this game. You know. In Borderlands 2, um, you, there'd be set bosses or set mini bosses that you would go and fight, and you and you knew if you would fight that boss, it would eventually drop a um, a um, a legendary. But in this game, it doesn't really work like that. It's the drop rate is so so you know it's few and far between that you'll get a drop rate. I mean, I think Zarpadon is the only guaranteed um, legendary that you can get uh, dropped in the game. I'm not 100% sure about that, actually. Um, but both the times, um, well, the three times that I've been through the campaign and um, and I've fought Zarpadon, I've had something drop. So, for me, she's dropped something every time, but I don't know if it's confirmed. But, yeah, to... to um, to nerf the drop rate on Irajira for the legendary loot just seems bonkers because basically what people would do was they would go and farm Irajira um, and then they would have to grind. Basically this game, it, you, you, the only way you're going to get a legendary is if it randomly pops up in a, um, in a vending machine or if you get another, if you 
manage to get a legendary, you're, you're going to then use two purple weapons to grind out a legendary and hope that you get one that you actually want, which it it's really, really stupid. I mean, part of the the joy of Borderlands 1 and 2, especially 2, was the, the aspect that you could just farm and you could farm as much as you want, you could farm anything you want. Um, and, it, you know, it's not like a Dark Souls type game where if you kill it 10 times it's gone. It's You farm it and it will keep respawning and it will keep giving you chances. Um, and that was really good. That's, you know, part of what the game has always been. And, you know, the pre-sequel isn't really like that. I mean, I'm going to read you two little things here. The two biggest um, requests for this game at the moment is so this is this is these are two posts one says we need a way to reset true vault hunter mode before anything else please patch that in um and that will be a big patch i mean um and then the second one says add more respawn stations and respawnable mini bosses now these are the two that are the biggest concerns because when you're going through true vault hunter mode you will not be level 50 you might be level 50 by the end of it but you'll not be level 50 going through it and so if you're gonna try and do side missions you have to actively avoid side missions that give uh, unique weapons or there's some missions that give you legendary loot. You have to actively avoid doing those missions. And it just doesn't make sense. And so if you had the ability to reset <coughs> the game mode, you could run through it as a level 50. Not and and you could um and you could actively go and do any side missions you wanted at any time if it was your first True Vault Hunter mode playthrough or your second. But I will say this, I will say that Gearbox will not do that. They've just announced Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, so it, they'll be like, oh, you'll be level 50, you've got these extra 10 levels that you can get, go out and play the game again. But that just defeats the point, because then again, you're trying to level up your level 50 character up to level 60, and you'll be worrying about this unique weapon, when I get it, it's going to be level 51, when I'm level 60, it's just going to do no damage, you know. So, they've got to really think about that. <coughs> also, to add more respawn stations and respawnable and the respawnable mini bosses, um, the mini bosses have always been a huge part of farming. If if you don't know what a mini boss is, think about Borderlands 2. Um, there was Dukino's mum. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. They're basically, you know, there'll be a boss, but they won't have the big uh, health bar. Um, <coughs> but they will drop. Loot and and there are these bosses in Ultimate Vault uh, in the pre sequel, but they're not respawnable. You know you can't go back and keep farming them, which is really really weird. Um, so that that definitely needs to be changed. And the fast travel stations need we need more because <coughs> in several different areas um, you have to run through four different areas to get to where you're going. And then when you get there, there'll be, you know, no fast travel. It just doesn't make sense. So it it becomes really long and tedious. You know, it, it, it does feel quite lazily put together at times. You know, running back and forward through different areas. You know, I'm thinking about the one mission where you are you go and find, um, what's his name, Pickle. And you go and find Pickle and then Jack wants you to go to the, uh, the Zop, Zop, go and... No, go and take out the bosun. And you have to go one way, then back the exact same way, then turn left, then go back and the same way again. It just it doesn't make sense. And that only happens because the respawn stations are so... Or the, the fast travel stations are so few and far between. And it just... It's just bonkers, you know. There's no... You know, there's no fast travel station in um, the veins of Helios as well it's just it's just madness so those stuff that stuff needs to be changed also just going back quickly um, the the nerf to the probe and the Rosie 
I don't have the actual quotes here, but Gearbox came out and they quoted one of the most ridiculous things in the world. Um, so they basically, I'm going to just uh, abbreviate what I heard. They basically said, um, we're nerfing these guns, you know, we're, they're still going to be good, but we're not going to make them as good because we want people to choose... We want people to have a wide choice and not just choose to use one or two guns. Just let that sink in for you. People are choosing to use this gun, but we don't want them to use that gun. We want people to play the game as we intended. So we're going to take away that choice. It's just absolutely astounding why would you do that that's that is not you know freedom of of choice freedom of speech whatever you want to say that is militant freaking stalin-esque putting your foot down no you're not doing this you're doing as i want and i don't care i mean the rosie is still a good weapon because laser guns in this game are overpowered they're the best weapon in this game similarly to how i feel the um the submachine guns were the best weapons in Borderlands 2, and they were never really um, pa um, nerfed too hard. The same things happen here. You know, just nerfing one gun won't change the fact that every laser gun, you know, a, le a level 50 um, laser rifle is amazing, you know. So, and the fact that the reasoning they came out is the choice about choice. We want people to have more choice. You know, if people want to choose and go out and use, you know, Miss Moxie's probe or what's... The, I can't remember the, her um, laser rifle. If they want to use Miss Moxie's laser rifle, if they want to use the E-gun, you know, if they want to use the freaking... Um, the bitch. I don't know their names in Borderlands, the pre-sequel. But it basically... It's just the bitch from Borderlands 2, you know, the Unkim Harold from Borderlands 2, which, on a separate point, is also quite lazy because, um, you know, similar legendaries and everything. But if people wanted to go out and use that stuff in their game, they would. So, nerfing a gun that people choose to use is not giving people more choice. It's denying them choice, and it's absolutely ridiculous that that Gearbox would do that and would come out with that ex with that um, response and expect people to be happy with it. I think it's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, like I said, the... Well, I'm going to read you out this... Um, this little uh, thing here. Basically, someone has just... This is be the last thing that I talk about, guys. This is just a guy who has on the forums just said everything that he need he thinks um, need to be fixed you know so he says okay I'll repost my little uh, my list of peeves from one of the other threads for the sake of reference now, I don't know what he's referring to originally but okay he says glitches with certain missions both story and side missions for example R&D scientist not triggering mission loot falling off the map. Now this happens a lot. It's happened to me. There's one mission where you can get locked out of of a gate. You need to go up to a certain point and activate it and it won't activate. It's ridiculous. Um, even more limited storage space. More upgrades from Crazy L to, bu to bump the bank up to 30 or even 50. Uh, they could even ramp up the moonstone costs and not even touch their spawn rate. Non-farmable bosses, non-resettable true Vault Hunter mode, missable challenges that are also extremely luck-based. Uh, one challenge that was ridiculously unreachable. Uh, I don't know what he's referring to there. It's called Daily Grind. Um, uh, bad fast travel placement, namely Outlands, but also the, the hub of heroism. Um, there's no reason for me to ever use that that node unless I have to quit in the short time before reaching Jack's office. Meanwhile, Crisis Scar, Liver, Veins and Training faci Facility have uh, what is it? no fast travel point at all. Certain combos of heroes and gear are ridiculously good. Um, enemies are quickly understood and mastered. There's not much to them. They're no 
There's no uh, Goliaths or Varkids. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Short overall length. And grinder griefing in multiplayer. Now, yeah, this is definitely a problem. Um, the game is short. The main story is short. And when you're playing that over and over again, you know, I'm not actually sure if I'll play it in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. I mean, obviously, it's a free update, so it'll be there. But I'm not sure if I'll be able to sit through it. You know, I played through Borderlands 2 about... 12 maybe maybe between 12 and 18 times I played through the campaign just to you know level up characters and you know it got tedious but it was still enjoyable because the guns you use and the level of difficulty I mean the, the fact that you have to use slag in ultimate vault hunter mode is stupid but you know you can get past that but yeah those are my thoughts guys I think it's really stupid this latest hot this uh, latest hot fix um, leave me your comments down below. What do you think about it if you're a Borderlands player? If not, do you think that Gearbox have a right to um, to do what they did? To, to patch the game in the way and then respond by saying it's all about choice even though we're you know technically taking choice away from you. Let me know what you're thinking guys. I think it's stupid. You know, I'll still play the game a bit but it's not as fun as Borderlands 2, that's for sure. Um, when it was when it had just come out, when it was fresh, you know, when Jack had just been released, it was still quite fresh to me. Um, but now it's it's definitely getting a, a lot staler, and I'm, you know, thinking more and more about going back to Borderlands 2, which is not a good thing for for Gearbox, obviously. Um, but the game is quite lazy; it's quite rushed, and you know that they're doing this because um, they're putting a lot of effort into. Borderlands 3, I hope, <laughs> I hope, but anyway guys, that is going to be it for me, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you enjoyed the gameplay as well, if you did enjoy it, leave a comment as I said, uh, leave a like on the video, follow me on Twitter and you can tweet me anything you want regarding this situation, I'll respond to you, um, also click on the link down below for my Twitch, I've been streaming a lot recently, um, and I'm really enjoying streaming. It's one of the most fun things I'm, I've done in a while. Um, so thank you for watching, guys. As always, my name is Watson 5 I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you again very soon. So thank you for watching. And goodbye.